This is DaVinci Resolve, and in DaVinci Resolve, there are pages that do lots of different things. Inside the Fusion page, there are nodes. Nodes represent distinct operations, and depending on how you put them together, you can generate complicated visual effects or motion graphics or simple titles, transitions, lots of cool stuff. And inside each of these nodes in the inspector, you can see all the parameters that you can modify when it comes to that specific node. And for each parameter, you have a little control. I can move this center parameter and move this text around my screen. Now you might be aware you have this little diamond next to each of these parameters and you can keyframe, you can set a keyframe at one position, come forward and move this parameter and then it will interpolate over that duration and slide between the two values you set. But instead of animating, we have another option of applying a modifier to that specific parameter. If I right click on center, I can go to modify with perturb. That opens up this little modifiers panel over here. If I click that, then I have a whole new set of controls. Instead of a function living on a node, now this perturb function is living as a modifier on this one specific control for this parameter. And I have all these new controls to dial in specifically how I want this perturb to work. If I want this to be much more confined in space, I can do that, pull up the wobble, pull up the speed, and all of this will generate a single value, or in this case, two values, because it's a point, to send it back to this one control. But you might have caught that over on the modifiers, we have these little keyframe options next to all of these. So if I uh, start here, pull the strength down to zero, set a keyframe, come up, pull the strength back up to one, then at the beginning, there will be no motion, and then it ramps up as that strength is keyframed. But here, we start entering dangerous territory, right? Because if I get rid of that animation by double clicking on strength, I can right click and I can add another modifier to this control on the parameter that is a modifier on a control. And we might already be going around the bend with this, but stick around because it gets uh, even cooler. I could modify this with an anim curve to sort of generate that animation, especially if I were making this a preset that wanted to live over on the uh, edit page. I've done full videos breaking down anim curves, super cool. In this instance, I'm going to create a calculation node. And all this does, it creates another modifier, and we have a first operand, an operator, and a second operand. So you, so you can give it two numbers, and you can decide, do you want them to add, subtract, multiply, divide, all these different operations, and whatever this little single calculation generates gets sent back to wherever this modifier is living, which in this case is over on the perturb for strength. In this instance, I'm gonna change this operator to multiply, and if we have that first operand as one and second operand as zero, then that gives us a value of zero. We have no motion here. And I'm gonna keep this first operand as our general strength slider, but with this multiply, if I change this to one, then all of a sudden we are getting that value of one. If I change this value up to two or something, you know, it is that much crazier. But if we keep that at a value of one, we can move on. So the second operand, if I have a value of one, it's working normal. If I have a value of zero, it is completely off. And here we can use sort of the next layer we're going to explore um, to create a functional toggle for this wiggle. I'm gonna right click on the title of this modifier, this calculation, right click and go to edit controls. This is a custom UI. And what we are doing is we are going to modify these existing controls. We're gonna modify them for now. In just a minute, we are going to create a new custom control. It's gonna be really cool. But in this ID dropdown, if I come to second operand, we can see that by default, this is a number generator and we are using a screw control, which is this little, little it's not a slider, you know, it's a screw control. It can like go on forever sort of deal. We could change this to be a slider or we could come down and change this to a checkbox. If I click OK, uh, I'm not going to cl click OK. <laughs> if we click OK here, it will add it to a new user page. I'm going to keep this page as calc. So I'll click OK. And now, instead of that little uh, uh, screw slider option, we have a checkbox. So it's unchecked, so we have no motion. If I click this, it will go from generating a value of zero to generating a value of one, which is then multiplied by this other first operand. So now this checkbox is a functional toggle for whether we want this on or off. And because we did this on the calculation itself, we still have this first operand. If we want to dial this back to something like 0.5 or even like 0.1, or all the way up to something like 10, or just back to one. So we retain the ability to change the strength 
while we also have this new option to toggle it on or off completely. And remember, these still have these keyframes, so I could very easily come forward, uh, check this on and off a few times, da, 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 da. and then now if I go back, it's going, it's, oh, interesting. Oh, watch what this is doing, right? It's not completely going off, but at each individual point, it, it, is, it is slowing down. So this still has a full gradient of values, right? It's not a straight zero or one, even though it's depicting that, the keyframes are still sliding between zero and one. But if we open up our spline viewer, uh, open up that second operand, we can see you know, it going back and forth between a value of zero and one. And if we just click this button to step in, then now we have that classic uh, step in or like square keyframe behavior. Wow, we're already covering so much and doing some cool stuff. Let's get even crazier. If you appreciate videos like this, you should visit sterlingsupply.co. This is my website where you can download dozens of presets, plugins, and effects for DaVinci Resolve. Many of these presets are completely free. Several are paid premium products, and website members also receive a bundle of those premium products along with exclusive extras like in-depth breakdowns of my newest presets. Why not check out Picture in Picture Pro, a drag and drop effect to shrink and mask any clip with advanced customization for shape, texture, and animation. My ongoing work is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. I'm gonna go back to this main text node and double click on the center to just get rid of all those modifiers. We are back to still text. Right click to get to that edit controls panel. We can either do this on this main text level, um, here in the inspector right on the title, or on the node itself. We can go there, edit controls. And we're gonna make a basic um, animated sort of like count up dollar effect. So in this edit controls, if we want to create a new value, then we just type in a name. So if I type in something like money, Amount, capitalization is important. I want this type to be a number. I want this input control to be a slider. And what I'm also gonna do here is check this box to make this an integer. That will get rid of, of uh, everything after a decimal point, um, which it would automatically generate if we added like animation to slide between those values. So if we keep this as an, as an integer, it will only show us whole numbers. We will click okay. In our inspector, it added this whole other page now for this user. And if I pull this up, um, it goes from zero to one, nothing happens. Um, automatically, I'm gonna go in back to edit controls, get this drop down, come all the way to the bottom where this new control should live, money amount. Um, this range, uh, instead of zero to one, I'm just gonna ramp that up to a hundred. Okay, now we have a zero to one, cool but this slider isn't actually interacting with anything else going on in this text node. We typed in the text here, this main layer, but over on user, we just have this money amount. What can we do? Well, over in this main area where we would normally type in whatever we want presented, we can right click and go to expression. Ooh. And if we just find the name for that control again, money amount, if I type in here, money amount, wow. Now, um, that value is being shown in this little text field. And if I change the slider, it's showing a different number. And remember, this is a full normal control now, even though it is driving something else, we could keyframe this or we could add a modifier. So now if I uh, create a modifier for this, I'll use that anim curves. So uh, at frame zero, we will go uh, set a custom input of zero. Um, 15 or 20 or so, we will set a custom input of one. So we are timesing that zero to one by whatever we put in the scale here. So if we do just do something, yeah, 100, 100 is a nice value. So over those 15 frames, it will go from a value of zero up to a value of 100. And at this point, if we want to change whatever number it goes into, um, this scale is where we will need to change that information. So we have a modifier that we have animated uh, living on a control that we added that we are then referencing by an expression to one of the built-in controls on this text node. Now that is just zero to 100. What if we want to specify this is dollars? Well, uh, one thing you could do is in this expression, you could do um, quotation mark, that dollar sign, quotation mark, period, or space, period, period, space. And if I click that, uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't do the dollar mark, I did the percentage. Per, where's the dollars? There. We could just handle this on an expression level, right? 
So this uh, quotation marks, dollar sign, quotation marks, um, whatever is in between quotation marks will just sort of be entered as is inside this expression sort of ecosystem. Expressions want to be pointed to parameters like this money amount. But if you want to ever like depict a character as is, just put it in uh, quotation marks and it will just sort of like paste that in. It'll paste it in um, if you add this sort of like period period. That's saying pretty much, hey, do this thing and like, then immediately do this other thing. So it's printing this dollar sign and then immediately pulling in this money amount. So if you wanted to change this to any other currency or something like that, you could do that. If you wanted something um, afterwards, you could period, period, and pull in like tacos in quotation marks. So now it's $100 tacos. Um, you could also add a space uh, right before the tacos, or you could add like another quotation mark, space quotation mark, if you wanted that to live on its own. Oh, maybe you can't, maybe you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Top of tacos, tacos as is, works great. But what if you want this flexibility um, without, you know, typing in this little expression window? Or if you're like publishing as this, this as an effect for other people, you don't want them messing around with your expressions. But what we can do is use what we've already learned. I can right click on this text, uh, come to edit controls. And now if I type in prefix, fix, spell it correctly. And instead of generating a number, I will generate text. I want that text edit controls. I only need one line to enter. Uh, that living on user is fine. I will click O oh, they, okay. If I click over to user, now we have this little prefix thing. And if we type in, you know, two dollar signs, just so we know we're working with something different. If I go back to that expression, get rid of this dollar sign, and I instead type in prefix dot value. Hey, now we have two dollar sign, hundred dollar tacos. You'll notice I did need to enter that value after the name of this specific value. This money amount is generating a number value, which is like what expressions normally want to work with. But since we generated text here, this dot value on this prefix parameter I added is kind of doing uh, like what these quotation marks did earlier. It's saying uh, just like paste in whatever is in this field. So we did that with a prefix, which I could then go and get back, change to that normal uh, dollar sign. Let's, for the fun of it, just add in suffix as well. Text, text, one line, okay. Suffix, space, tacos. Get rid of this. So now we are back to just, oh no, now it errors because we have those periods. But that by itself, $100, period, period, uh, suffix dot value. Hey, $100 tacos. And remember, right? Yeah, we still have that anim curves living on money amount. So if I go back to my frame zero, they're $0 tacos. But over those first 15 frames, whoosh, up to $100 tacos. All, all of this living on one node. And there are lots of different nodes. I've demonstrated a lot of the more advanced stuff you can do in Fusion at the most high level. Again, I didn't super break down the edit controls menu or the full view of what Anim Curves does. With this video, I kind of just wanted to blow your mind a little bit. Working with nodes at all in Fusion it can be intimidating for a lot of people, but for the people who stick with it, dive in. Um, not only can you learn just what the nodes do, but you can further not, not hack, <laughs> but you can further modify these nodes to add like really cool dynamic behavior. Let me even uh, let me even go back, show off something cool. Um, on this anim curves, I uh, keyframed um, that input on a custom source to happen over 15 frames. If I get rid of that input, or if I just change the source back to duration, then over the course of this entire effect, it will ramp up uh, to 100. If I pull up the scale a little bit, wait time scale. Yeah, like 1.2, no, no, that goes up. Ooh, and uh, clip high, yeah. Then it'll play that at 1.2 speed, so it'll finish with a little bit of space at the end. Um, but this will stay dynamic to however long I stretch this effect to be on the edit page. How cool is that? So it'll take a lot longer if the effect is a lot longer. It'll still have a little bit of breathing room, but that breathing room will be um, uh, proportional to how long that effect is that's the power of some anim curves. Sometimes it's fun to just show off and make a tutorial for like a flashy functional effect. And sometimes it's just really cool to show off um, the systems that make all of that possible. You got resolve, which has pages, which have nodes, which have uh, controls that you can animate or you can add a modifier to. And then all of those modifiers have controls. 
You can animate or add modifiers to, and you can even generate your own controls that interface with those other controls that you can then animate or add modifiers to, and it can it can just keep going. If you've been around the channel for a while, I'm sure you've seen me show off um, a lot of these specific things before. But like I said, I just wanted to blow some people's minds who maybe haven't been exposed to this and maybe help convince some of them um, that yes, the, the fusion can be a lot, but it's very cool and building these kind of effects can be very rewarding. I do have some plans for how I want to more thoroughly show off um, all the different uh, modifiers in Fusion. So maybe stick around for that. I'm not quite sure when, I, when I'll get to, 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 that, to that sort of thing. I, I, have, I have plans, I have ideas. But before I let you go, I gotta ask, did you know any of this? If you did know any of it, what's your favorite modifier? I like that calculation modifier, it's pretty cool. There's an offset modifier that can do some really cool stuff. I gotta show that off again uh, sometime soon. But whether you knew this or not, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.